So this is a clinical, uh, this is a review of a case that we treated here at the clinic. This is a 60 year old female who presented with a 3.5 centimeter palpable invasive ductal tumor. She had, uh, the, she had two positive lymph nodes based on fine needle aspiration of her axilla. Um, the tumor was ER and PR positive and HER2 was three plus. Um, her FISH study was positive, showing amplification of HER2, and she had a copy ratio of 6.8. Um, she had a mammoprint study performed and a blueprint study performed. This showed that the tumor was a HER2 enriched subtype and the MPI was minus 0.662, indicating that this was an ultra high risk that somebody would benefit significantly from chemotherapy. And we know because it was a HER2 positive on blueprint, that she would benefit from dual targeting with her Herceptin and Progetta. So the patient underwent uh, exactly that. She, she was treated with neoadjuvant THCP with dual targeting with both Herceptin and Progetta. The patient then was taken to surgery after chemotherapy and she'd had a complete pathologic response. So essentially, she went from a stage 2B to a stage 0 tumor with the intended survival benefit that that uh, confers. All of that was possible because we had an excellent idea of the tumor biology because of the mammoprint and blueprint studies. Yes, mammoprint is predictive in terms of chemotherapy response, despite what you may have heard um, elsewhere. And we know this for a couple of different reasons. First, there was now a study in breast cancer research in 2010, where they did a retrospective review of 226 patients with T1 through 3 tumors who were N0 through N1, and all 90% of which were ER positive. Uh, these individuals were treated with either an anthracycline in 85% of cases, a taxane in 9% uh, of cases, or with traditional CMF in 5% uh, in of cases. This clearly indicates a benefit from chemotherapy that can be predicted by the, um, by the mammoprint and blueprint uh, testing. This is further um, confirmed in, uh, in the MBREST data from Pat Whitworth's group. In 2017, they published in Annals a, a prospective uh, multicenter neoadjuvant chemotherapy trial and found that uh, pathologic complete response was predictive was predicted by the patient's NPI score, and uh, again at uh, at a risk of um, at an NPI of between uh, around 0 0.355, your potential benefit from cytotoxic chemotherapy was around zero to two percent. However, when you got to a risk uh, or an NPI of zero then your risk of different distant recurrence was around 10%, and if you had a score of minus one, it was around 30%. Again, clearly implying a benefit to chemotherapy that could be predicted by the MPI score, regardless of subtype. So this is a, this is a case uh, example from my practice. This is a 73 year old female who presented with a 2.7 centimeter uh, palpable tumor. She was clinically uh, negative. She underwent surgery and was found to be in fact no negative. She had uh, her she was ER positive at uh, about 5% staining. She was PR negative. She was HER2 negative both by IHC and by uh, FISH. Um, however. She had her mammoprint test showed that she was actually a basal subtype and her NPI was very low at minus 1.000. So this patient actually clinically appeared to be a fairly low risk uh, ER positive luminal tumor, but in reality is a very high risk um, basal tumor. A correct identification of the, of the biology of this tumor allowed us to treat this patient with neoadjuvant chemotherapy with ACT, and she has done well since that time. She was diagnosed about four years ago. This type of patient is not very common. However, you really want to pick these people up because these are people who will have a recurrence um, fairly quickly down the road and not do well in the long term. But by identifying these people with the, uh, the mammoprint and the blueprint studies, you can correctly identify them appreciate their tumor biology, treat them appropriately, and you can keep them out of trouble in the future.
We test on the core biopsy specimen really for two reasons. First, there is no disadvantage to testing on the core biopsy specimen. Um, many of you may have seen the recent poster at Miami Breast, which has now been published in Translational Oncology in May of this year that looked at correlation between um, mammoprint results that are performed on cores versus surgical specimens. And a success rate for obtaining a useful result um, correlates. 93%, 93.7% of core biopsy specimens produce useful clinical results versus 95.1% of surgical specimens. And these numbers are not statistically uh, different. If you look at concordance, looking at results of the, uh, of the test information on patients who have had core biopsies versus surgical biopsies, again, 100% of the core biopsy specimens produce an accurate blueprint result versus 95% of, uh, of the surgical specimens. So really there's no, from a testing, from a biologic perspective, from an accuracy perspective, there's no uh, disadvantage in testing on the core specimen. But the real reason to do it is actually relates to the workflow involved. You can, by testing on the core specimen, you get the results faster. This allows you to plan out patient's chemotherapy sooner. For example, in most clinical practices, um, surgeons see the patient after a diagnosis has been made. If you biopsy in the core specimen, that information can be ready for the surgeon to plan his treatment or ready for your tumor board to plan their treatment uh, before, um, the patient, uh, b before the patient actually even presents. And so when you see the patient for the first time, you can then discuss with them their most optimal treatment plan. And uh, this results in faster treatment decisions, better patient satisfaction, and a shorter time from diagnosis to treatment. The first thing I like is that the mammoprint and blueprint studies allow you to reclassify the tumor based on actual tumor biology, and this allows you to predict their response to chemotherapy. Um, most people assess what kind of chemotherapy to perform and how it's going to respond based on IHC studies of the tumor, but IHC studies are only an approximation of the actual underlying tumor biology. For example, if you have a hormone receptor positive HER2 negative tumor, these are not luminal, not all of these are luminal tumors. About 17% of them turn out to be basal tumors. And if you treat them based on the actual subtypes rather than the IHC approximation, you get better, you get better results. The correct recognition of the underlying biology is what allows you to get higher um, response rates to neoadjuvant chemotherapy in particular. So rather than guessing as to the bio biological nature of the tumor, we can measure it directly. Well, COVID has been has really presented a big challenge for um, for breast care, particularly for surgery. In a lot of uh, places, a lot of hospitals, um, elective cases, including breast cancer cases, have been put on hold to preserve resources for treatment of COVID patients. Now, everybody's hospital is different in terms of you know what the rules are and how this is actually done, but it's really stirred up a lot of interest in. Um, in testing with uh, mammoprint and uh, blueprint because mammoprint and blueprint can really identify people who would potentially undergo chemotherapy first which would free up uh, free them up from surgery at least to delay their surgery for six months or so until their chemotherapy is completed or might benefit from um, a neoadjuvant endocrine therapy and this has become more popular as surgical treatments have been uh, delayed Again, people who are low risk, uh, and especially people who are ultra low risk, can benefit from neoadjuvant neo endocrine therapy that can help them uh, achieve a partial response, particularly in terms of their lymph node status, um, prior to uh, undergoing surgery. And that has become a pathway for people who have had their surgery delayed as a result of uh, COVID. And of course, patients who actually are thought to be luminal, but turn out to be basal or turn out to be HER2 positive, 
really benefit from new adjuvant chemotherapy, and as time has gone on, insurance companies have broadened their eligibility for this type of treatment to include not just stage two or three patients, but patients who are, including some patients who are stage one patients, and so now this has become uh, a different pathway. In any event, knowing the tumor biology that you're treating allows you to plan for uncertainties, including the uncertainties that surround COVID, and uh, help you to have, have your patient have an excellent result despite the present difficulties. So here's a patient example. This is a patient from our clinical practice, a 66-year-old female presented with a 2.2 centimeter palpable tumor. The tumor was uh, ER and PR positive. It was HER2 negative on uh, IAC and uh, FISH. Clinically, this is somebody who is a high-risk individual, um, and uh, just because of, mainly because of the size of the tumor. The, uh, the patient had a mammar print index that was 0.094, indicating that based on her subtype, she was actually a low-risk luminal A, okay? And her subtype also showed that she was, uh, she was luminal. So the patient was treated with adjuvant and astrozole and has uh, done well after surgical therapy and radiation. We know that this patient would not benefit from cytotoxic chemotherapy because of the results of the MINDAC trial recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The, uh, the MINDAC trial showed that for people who were clinically high risk but genomically low risk, they did not uh, benefit significantly from cytotoxic chemotherapy. Distant event-free survival in patients treated with chemotherapy was around 95.7% with a survival of 93.2% in individuals who were not treated with cytotoxic chemotherapy. These results were not significantly different. So more recent data has shown a possible small benefit in women less than 50 who uh, undergo chemotherapy, chemotherapeutic treatment even if they're on the low risk group because of probably ovarian suppression. But this is a benefit of maybe 2%. It's not uh, significantly high. So this is a case example from my practice. This is a 58-year-old female who presented with a 1.5 centimeter screen detected tumor. She was taken to surgery, had a lumpectomy, uh, margins were clear, uh, three sentinel lymph nodes were identified, all were negative. The tumor was ERPR positive. Her KI67 was uh, 24% and this placed her in the clinically high risk category. Um, however, her MPI was 0.437 and her subtype was luminal. We know, again, this is somebody who would be fall into the ultra-low risk group, and we know these individuals not only do not benefit from cytotoxic chemotherapy, but, they, but there's no benefit of treating them for more than two years with any endocrine therapy. And you could actually make a fairly good case that they don't benefit from any um, endocrine therapy at all. Breast cancer-specific survival at 20 years in the SCO3 trial, from which, uh, which was reported by Dr. Esserman, showed that individuals who were treated with uh, any form of tamoxifen had a 95 or 97% uh, breast cancer specific um, uh, event-free survival at 20 years versus 94% of patients who had no endocrine treatment.